Hey everybody, Dr. O here. Got a short and sweet one here today. Uh, just your general senses. So you don't have to know like sensory pathways, motor pathways, those types of things here. So just a handful of questions. So what are your general senses and then what are your special senses? So how I remember it is just remember your special senses and then all the rest of them are general senses. So special senses are going to, they, they, they say that they have special sense organs. So obviously some make complete sense like look at vision. You know, your eyes are a very complex sensory organ. Hearing, same thing with the cochlea, equilibrium with, with your vestibule. But then we have smell and taste. So taste or gustation, smell, olfaction. So taste, smell, sight, hearing, and then equilibrium or balance. Those are your special senses. So all the rest of them, you know, pain, uh, touch, uh, proprioception, vibration, all these types of things are examples of general senses. I would say the one that probably confuses people the most is proprioception. So proprioception is a pretty complicated sensation. It, I like to call your proprioceptors your joint position awareness receptors, which we'll see here at the bottom. That is a general sense though. So some people get confused by that. But just remember your special senses, which are usually covered in a completely separate chapter in anatomy classes, are going to be vision, taste, smell, hearing, and then equilibrium or balance. So those are the special senses. Anything else is going to fall under the general sense category. All right, what does the effect of a receptive field's size have on your ability to localize sensation? So every sensory receptor we have is monitoring a specific area for a specific sensation. So if a, if a, if a receptor has a very small sensory sensory re or receptive field, then it's only monitoring a very small location. If it has a really large, large receptive field, it's monitoring a large one. So the smaller a receptive field, the more specific you can be about where a sensation is coming from. So like if you touch my fingertips or my, my lips, I'll be able to much more accurately tell you exactly where I'm being touched or exactly where the sensation is coming from than I would, let's say, on the back of my thighs, back, you know, the back of my legs, back of my, my, the small of my back, etc. The receptive fields there are larger. And then your organs are going to be even larger, right? If I have a stomach ache, it just hurts somewhere in here. I can't say it's right here on the back wall in the cardia area of the stomach. We don't have we the the receptors in your organs are huge the receptive fields so you can't localize the sensation so that's probably the biggest difference so I can tell exactly what's going on here at my fingertips because I have small receptive fields organs not so much generally it's even just in the right ballpark or something you know re referred pain all right. What's the difference between a tonic and a phasic receptor? So each sensory receptor is either going to be a tonic or phasic receptor. So just remember, tonic receptors are always on. So as long as there's a sensation from that area, it's the signal is going to be uh, at least at least started. We'll talk about adaptation, how we get used to things. But tonic receptors are always on. Phasic receptors, they're usually off, and they only respond to changes. So the best examples I can give you here, uh, pain receptors are tonic receptors. As long as there's tissue damage in that area, there's going to be some pain. You can block it. You can try. You can get used to it. You can try to think about other things. But the signal that there is tissue damage in that area is going to keep being sent at least you know up your nervous system. Them. Phasic receptors are looking for changes. So your thermoreceptors, your temperature receptors would be the best example here. You're going to sense a change in temperature. You're not going to constantly know what the temperature is unless it's way too hot or way too cold for you and it's uncomfortable. So like you go outside, let's say it's five, not today, of course, it's it's middle winter here, but um, you know, uh, it's five degrees cooler than you'd like. Well, you notice that, but then you get used to it pretty quickly. So phasic receptors are going to respond to changes or look at like when you first put your socks on, right? You, you feel them, but then you stop feeling them. The there's no more, more no more change. So tonic receptors always on. Phasic receptors are usually off. They they respond to changes in sensations. All right. So what is adaptation? Uh, adaptation is getting used to something. So you walk into a room and you smell something you don't like. Well, you can get used to it. Uh, any type of sensations like that. I think about my wedding ring. Like I, I used to kind of bother me when I first started wearing it. Now I don't even know it's there. I have to check to make sure it's there. So you get used to things. Or when I used to work in a in a cadaver lab or a, a, la a lab with him with human donors. Um, the, at first, the smell was very powerful. Then I just, I didn't even notice it anymore. So adaptation is the ability to get used to things. So there are two types, central adaptation and peripheral adaptation. Peripheral adaptation is your receptors really just kind of quit sending the signals, at least as, as intensely as they used to. Central adaptation, the signals get to your higher parts of your nervous system, but you just kind of filter it out and don't care anymore. So it's adaptation is this process of getting used to something, whether it be a temperature change or a smell or anything else.
Um, another kind of, I think it's an important example is I think we, this happens with, with food, especially if we eat a lot of things that are really sweet, a lot of sugar, like your receptors almost get numb to it. So it takes more and more sugar to, tr to get the same pleasure sensation. So we keep consuming more and more of those kinds of things. All right. Um, what next little section here? Let me move this up. What is a pain receptor called? A pressure receptor or a, and a temperature receptor? Pain receptors are called nociceptors. Pressure receptors are called baroreceptors, and temperature receptors are thermoreceptors. So pain receptors are called nociceptors, and they're, and they're tonic receptors. They're always on as long as there's tissue damage or whatever's happening in the area. Pressure receptors are called baroreceptors. Think the receptors in your blood vessels, the receptors that make sure you don't overstretch your stomach or your lungs, those types of things. Then your temperature receptors are called thermoreceptors. So there are cold and hot thermoreceptors that are monitoring changes in temperature because they're phasic receptors. Then lastly, um, well, well, this kind of ties into the next one too. What is proprioception? So proprioceptors and your baroreceptors, the pressure receptors, those are two examples of what are called mechanoreceptors. They respond to mechanical stimuli. The third group are the tactile receptors. Like I won't ask you to know Merkel's discs or Pacinian corpuscles or those kind of things, but the receptors that monitor like crude touch, fine touch vibration pressure these are uh, these are all tactile receptors they're all or they're all examples of mechanoreceptors so whereas a pressure receptor is a baroreceptor and it monitors stretching or pressure changes proprioception is joint position awareness so just you know close your eyes where's your where's your right elbow well you should know where it is your body's aware of where it is in space very important for when you're moving when you're navigating obstacles uh, so you don't fall over these kind of things uh, another thing to note about proprioception I'm very very fascinated by it. I used to do a lot of work with athletes and I thought that balance training and these kind of things were super important. Like for an athlete to recover from an injury, we had to recover the, ne the neurological damage that would have occurred from straining ligaments and these types of things. So I was real big in balance training and this type of stuff, which now you're seeing being a lot more popular. Uh, I'm not saying I created the idea, but I was kind of ahead of the curve there. I researched proprioception a lot. But the other thing to note about proprioception is that it's purely somatic sensation. So if you close your eyes and I tell you, ask you where your right ankle is, your right elbow, whatever, you know where it is. If I close your eyes and have you say, or I tell you to close your eyes and ask you where your spleen is, you have no idea. It's a purely physical somatic sensation. We don't have visceral proprioceptors. You only know where your organs are if you've learned them in this in this class. So, okay, uh, not much there, but those are your general senses. Be blessed and have a wonderful day.